According to reporting by Rolling Stone, two sources who are cooperating with House investigators allege multiple members of Congress participated in dozens of planning briefings ahead of the January 6th insurrections. The source also alleged to have interacted directly with key Republicans or members of their staff to strategize the events leading to the insurrection. Those named include White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, and Representative Paul Gozar of Arizona, who even hinted at the possibility of a blanket pardon from unrelated investigations as an incentive for participation in the planning of January 6th protests. The sources also allege that Meadows, who the January 6th Commission has subpoenaed, was 100% aware of the concerns that protests could turn violent, but declined to intervene. Despite the alleged links between those close to Trump and organizers of the protests, formal charges for any of the major players may be years away. Meanwhile, former Trump advisor Steve Bannon has yet to face any consequences following his refusal to appear for a deposition related to the January 6th. Uh, the White House voted for a referral to charge him with criminal contempt of Congress. It will be up to Attorney General Merrick Garland to seek prosecution for the charge. And while we wait for any formal charges to happen, Last Thursday, a black man who wasn't even present at the Capitol was sentenced to the longest jail term connected to the insurrection. 54-year-old Troy Smocks of Dallas, Texas, was sentenced to 14 months on a felony charge for transmitting threats in interstate commerce connected to the insurrection. According to charging documents, Smocks posted threatening messages to the social media par uh, platform Parler from a DC hotel room the day after the insurrection there were deemed threats to politicians working on Capitol Hill. Smock's messages that stated insurrectionists should go hunting and prepare their weapons to go get them in regards to Democrats and Republicans garnered over 50,000 views, which triggered an investigation. Joining us to discuss the latest developments in the January 6th investigation are law professor from University of Georgia School of Law, Titus T. Nichols and founder of One People's Project, Daryl Lamont Jenkins. So, Professor Nichols, what do you make of this Rolling Stone piece that says that there are people who are cooperating who s implicate specific Republican lawmakers and members of the administration? Well, Charles, thank you for having me on the show. I'm not surprised at all. If you look at the individuals, these are the same individuals who have made their career on being rabble-rousers and promoting these lies and simply pushing these conspiracy theories. So the fact that reporters have found that their staff and even they themselves were part of putting together the January 6th insurrection, it's not a surprise at all. You have Congressman Mo Brooks who spoke at the rally right before the invasion of the U.S. Capitol took place. So, Dale, so what should what should come of this? So how do, how does the committee move forward? How does the Justice Department move forward with these people making these sorts of very, very serious allegations? Uh, well, first of all, thank you for having me on um, again. And what I would say is we I don't know. I'm guessing I'm at the point now where I have to accept the fact that they're probably just dotting their I's and crossing their T's. But people out there are getting frustrated. They want to see some results. We have seen arrests over the past uh, 10 months, but they all seem to be just 800 fall guys. We want to see the people who orchestrated this to get some comeuppance. And even though it is 10 months later, we're scared that nothing's going to happen. We would like to see more actions coming from the Justice Department, of course. We would like to see uh, certain um, things coming out of this hearing that will hold Congress accountable, or rather I should say the Congress members that might have participated in this insurrection held accountable. Um, but once again, it remains to be seen. It may be frustrating, but it remains to be seen. But it can't be too long. Just had a segment so, where we're talking about the concern of voter rights, but yeah, go. I'm sorry. 
No, I'm sorry. I was going to get Professor Nichols to weigh in on that because we already have yes, Steve please. Bannon. They've already referred him to the to the Justice Department, saying he he's violated uh, uh, the rules here. He refused to show up for his deposition. They need to act. They have yet to act. They have yet to signal in any way what they're going to do. This could not happen with the average everyday person on the street. You, I don't show up for a deposition. There's a warrant for my arrest the next day. So, how 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 is this supposed to go forward? What is the Justice Department going to do, do you believe? Well, Charles, we all know that the rules are different for those at the top versus everybody else. If you, me, or any other melanin-filled citizen refused a court subpoena to be in court, let alone Congress, there wouldn't be any discussion about our legal rights or precedents or anything like that. The sheriff's office would come down to our jobs, to our house, to our mama's house, wherever, slap the handcuffs on us and drag us to court. And then we'd be locked up just for the inconvenience. However, you see Congress going through every painstaking detail to try to give Steve Bannon a chance to cooperate when we know he's not going to. The fact that they have to take a vote to hold him in contempt and now they have to refer it over to the U.S. attorney. And the U.S. attorney ha or Department of Justice has to decide if they're going to prosecute him. And then they have to decide if there's going to be a trial. And at the end of the day, he's still not going to testify. And so years are going to pass by and nothing's going to happen to him. And so what it's showing is that the rules at the top are much different than the rules for everybody else. So there, I love how uh, Titus said they would come to our house or our mama house or where we were. I love, I love that little uh, interlude. But so, so Dale, <laughs> hey. is, is it possible that they could just run out the clock, though? Th this is what I'm worried about. So if, if we say that it could take years to prosecute the people who these people in Rolex don't have implicated, well, administrations don't necessarily last for years and years and years, right? So you could have a different person in charge of the Justice Department. You could have a different president with a different set of priorities. You could even have a return of the past president by that time. Is it possible that all of these people could simply run out the clock or get to a point where the next president could, could you know, uh, pardon them before they even get through the process of being charged and arrested or whatever? Well, here's the thing that I was alluding to. Uh, the Democrats can't risk that because voters are watching and voters are watching them not do anything about those individuals. There is really no excuse for inaction. You know, I mean, I think if they come to 2022 or 2024 with nothing to show for anything that has happened since January 6th, only thing people are gonna look at is a bunch of people who are not protecting them from people who, basically have said they wanted a civil war in this country. And if we are not being protected by the people that are supposed to be protecting us, we're gonna replace them. And the Democrats know that. The incumbents know that. So they better do something. Daryl T. Nichols and Daryl Lamont Jenkins, thank you both for joining us tonight. And they were gonna come find you at your house or your mama's house. I'm not gonna forget that one. Anyway, thank you guys for both for joining me. <laughs>